This is a high school correlation for uh, varsity teams. Uh, the vertical axis, uh, the positive correlations go upwards and then the negative are downwards. On the left side is more wins and on the right side are more losses. So you can see that the first two on the left side are point scoring and side out. But after that, what are the specific skills? And they, they go from aces, kills, receive errors, dig errors, and attack errors. All right, that's the order. Skills that uh, correlate to winning or losing. First, I don't really focus that much on side out and point scoring because uh, they're complex multi-skill um, actions. I'd rather focus on single skills, which are much easier to improve. And of course, the first two are aces and receive errors, which are two sides of the same coin and are the number one and number two skills, serve and receive. This is followed by kills, and kills become more important at upper levels of play, but not at lower levels. Dig errors, which are the inverse of kills, and are right behind receive errors in importance. Now there's some uh, important nuances to the correlations. The first one is that serving errors are not highly correlated with losing. And I think you'll see this sometimes in the college matches where teams will be missing serve after serve, but end up winning. But the aggressive serving is critical to keep your opponent uh, out of system. Serve receive quality is much less important than avoiding getting aced, right? So instead of worrying about getting that perfect pass up, the team really needs to worry about making sure the ball doesn't hit the floor. Blocking is not super important, and attack errors are important and are about number five in priority. So there are age and level considerations. Inexperienced players play is mostly serve and receive focus. So ball control is not very good, and there are very few kills. And aces are the way to win. I think you've seen these in these 11s and 12s matches where somebody will sit there and, and you know, put out like 15 aces in a row. You need to be at a high intermediate or advanced level of play before kills start to outnumber aces per set. So prioritizing skills, learn to serve well first. And the reason is it's a closed skill and it's the easiest skill to learn. And if you learn to serve tough, it will put pressure on your, your team to receive better. So first skill to learn, really, really get good at serving consistently really tough then focus on serve receive focus on your team excuse me focus your team on error reduction versus pass accuracy which means the team needs to work hard to keep balls off the floor and not do these you know your ball type of things and let a let a serve go right between two players and hit the floor right it's very important not to get aced next attack Attack needs to be trained in such a way that you can have both growth and control along the way. So encourage big swings on good sets. Take a big swing if you miss, it's okay, but it needs to be a good set. And then encourage controlled placement or just keeping the ball in the court when you get a bad set. And so you don't wanna be taking big swings on bad sets, which is something you need to learn anyway. And it's a good thing to keep in mind along the way. Hitting errors correlate highly with losing. So keep this in mind. Dig errors correlate highly with losing. So get your team to be aggressive digging the ball and chasing balls down. It's much easier to get better at digging than it is at hitting. And I make a simple rule in my gym. Someone must dive for a ball, even if it's out of reach. Otherwise, all players on the team must dive. It's a simple way to reinforce a behavioral change. And you'll be amazed at how quickly your team is just throwing themselves after balls. And if they do this a lot, the balls will come up and a couple points saved will make a huge difference in a close match. Free ball accuracy is something I really think about because to me, this type of precision really aids in having more of an attack. And I like running sets through the middle, even on lower level teams, because it's a really easy set to put up, for example, a two set instead of a one. And it's actually pretty easy for the hitters to hit the ball because the set goes vertically up and down rather than at an arc. And in even bad context, contacts result in kills. Now, when you focus on middle hits, passers learn the value of a perfect pass and they become part of the offense. They can see that a perfect pass leads to a kill. So beat a banding and teach precision. 
Now, here's the other thing, aggressive free ball return. At lower levels of play, there are tons of free balls. And even at higher levels of play, sometimes I see teams doing really silly, throwing an easy free ball out to their opponent who's going to come back and crush the ball. So first, teach your team to rocket that bump back into the deep corner of zone one. This is typically a good place because that's usually where the setter releases from. Right? And if they make an aggressive move like this and the ball goes out, treat it like an attack and congratulate the player for making a good move. Then if this doesn't work and as teams get better at covering this area, then you might consider dropping it on the 10 foot line right about six feet in from the sideline. This is where the setter transitions from the backcourt to the net. And if the setter takes this ball, they're instantly out of system, right? Because she's taking the first ball, libero probably has to set the ball. Or if she doesn't, it might hit the floor if the middle back player doesn't go up, come up quickly and cover this, this ball. So again, you can turn free balls into a scoring opportunity.